Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my blog. All right, okay, so last time I said this was going to be a little bit of a odd blog because um, I want to sort of do updates on the characters from Hyena Boy, um, by which I mean, uh, for those of you who do check out some of the other videos on my channel, uh, back in March I did a series of videos where I did like little character introductions for some of the characters in Hyena Boy, and it was part of the early promotional stuff for Hyena Boy. Um, but those videos were done at an earlier stage in the editing process, and since that point, um, my opinions and thoughts on some of the characters have altered and changed slightly. So I kind of want to talk about how they are now a little bit and some of the, the changes that have kind of occurred. Um, just because, A, I'm still trying to promote Hyena Boy, so go, go check out links in the description. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it feels like, you know, I know I'm doing a lot of vlogs where I'm mentioning Hyena Boy at the moment, but I am trying to promote Hyena Boy at the moment, so, you know, I, I've got to kind of go where I need to sort of go with it. And, you know, this vlog will also end up being part of the promotional uh, playlist for Hyena Boy as well, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that should be a good enough introduction, right? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> since the point in time where I released those, um, I also did back in March a um, vlog where I was talking about character birthdays and at that point in time I said that Jay was the only one with a canonical birthday um, or a canon birthday uh, within the, the Hyena Boy um, narrative and since then, um, partly because I am working on the companion book to Hyena Boy at the moment, um, the other characters, uh, or at least the other, the, the friend characters, the, the characters that I'm going to be talking about in this vlog, have all now received uh, canonical canon birthdays. Um, just because it made things a lot easier for doing this one by, you know, canonising when their birthdays were, and I sort of always sort of had like a rough idea, um, so I think I mentioned back in the birthday ones that um, Slyze I felt like was the end of September and Zell was like November and uh, Orion was April and Talora was June, and yeah, those, those months have sort of stuck, um, but they now all have actual dates, the actual days, actual dates of birth, um, which is quite exciting. Um, so, you know, in, in amongst that, I also named the schools that the guys went to. I also named the town, which I hadn't back in March, <laughs> which is now never eaten. Um, but very sort of like little details like that. It's kind of like, kind of went in during the last, not the birthday stuff, the birthday stuff I'd sort of figured out and then wrote on my calendar just to remind me. <laughs> and they will go on to the calendar again next year, just, just because I'm weird like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so um, the details, like the names of the schools and, and stuff like that, were kind of like added in at the very, very last minute once I'd sort of made up my mind that I was definitely going to write the companion book. Um, because I felt like I needed to sort of around the continuity of the two stories and that was kind of the easiest way of, of sort of doing it um and and like i said i gave them all their canon birthdays um and on the day that we're actually rec i'm actually recording this would be sly's canon birthday um which i know the calendar behind me is saying october i did flip it over for recording <laughs> because I know this video is not out till October, um, 
and it's the end of September. It is actually the last day of September today, so now you guys know when Sly's kind of birthday is. <laughs> and when I'm recording this. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah, let's let's actually talk about the characters, shall we? Um, so, Sly, who is the oldest of the the characters we're going to talk about, um, but the third oldest in his with his brothers, um, he definitely a natural leader type, and this is something I've always kind of felt about his character is that there is something about his character which kind of makes him the, the natural leader, not necessarily in a way that the group acknowledges but in, in the sort of sense of there were certain friends that I had growing up that I felt were like the natural leaders of the group and the group as a whole kind of recognized that they were the natural sort of leaders of the group even if we didn't sort of rely on them to be the leader as such it was just kind of you kind of knew you kind of got this sense that they were the ones who were either going to organize whatever was going to happen or they were the ones that you could rely on to sort of keep everything sort of moving at a steady pace and yeah there, there's there was something sort of about them which not necessarily that they were the more most char charismatic or anything like that but just something about them that kind of gave you the sense that you know they, that's their position within the group that's that's who they are that's what they they do for us they they lead <laughs> Apologise, that's not necessarily the best way of putting it. Um, so yeah, Sly, in that sense, is sort of the group's sort of natural leader. He is definitely the most active, although he definitely competes with, with Jay, I think, a little bit for that. Um, okay, so along with being sort of the group's natural leader, I would say there's definitely a slight naivety uh, when it comes to, to Sly and, and how he is and how he thinks. And I think kind of comes a little bit from being the, the second youngest of, of four um, and certainly when you sort of take into account that there is a little bit of an age gap um, with, with the siblings so it's you know he can just about remember a time when he didn't have his younger youngest uh, younger brother um, so there, there was for a while where he was the youngest sibling and certainly you know whilst his, his younger brother was sort of growing up, he probably felt like, you know, not necessarily like an older brother um, for a while. And that probably did take a little bit to sort of kick in because that sort of move between being the youngest sibling and then being the, young, the second youngest sibling, when you can sort of remember the difference. Um, I think that's sort of, I don't know, there, there's something about that sort of situation where I feel that's why he's got that slight naivety to him because, you know, he could have been the youngest sibling, but wasn't um and hasn't necessarily fully stopped being the younger sibling even though he does take on the, the the duties and responsibilities of being an older brother but it's in sort of taking on those responsibilities and duties of being an older brother that he that then becomes the natural leader of, of the friends anyway and i think that's all sort of tied in together and all sort of part of the process and you know Sly, Sly is generally just a really nice guy. <laughs> He's very, very accepting of situations around him. He doesn't ask a whole lot of questions. I don't think he feels like he needs to ask a whole lot of questions. You know, he'll ask the questions he feels need answers. And as long as the answers are something that he can understand, he doesn't want to probe any further. He doesn't need to probe any further. And I think there's something about that that okay adds to that sense of naivety that his character has but it also makes him very genuine and genuine in a way that i think a lot of my characters don't necessarily have not necessarily within the, the hyena boy and the other project narratives um but in in general when i'm, when I'm writing sort of characters um i think sly is kind of need to just accept um, the situations around him, even if he doesn't fully understand them, is very unique to him. Um, most of my characters ask lots of questions and they don't accept things until they understand what's going on. <laughs> Whereas he'll just kind of go, okay, this, this is the situation, I'm just going to, to go with it. And yeah, certainly in the, the other book, 
the, the companion book to Hyena Boy, you definitely get a very, very strong sense that that is just how he is. He's just very open and very accepting of the people that he cares about because he trusts that they are going to do the right thing by him because he knows he's going to do the right thing by them. And that's just, you know, that's just how he is. That's just, just what it comes down to. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think, I think I've covered Sly in a, in a good way. Yay! <laughs> Alright, so moving on to Zell. <clears throat> now, Zell made a lot of changes throughout the course of the editing process. And um, yeah, he, he was the character that I found the hardest to tie down for a long time until something clicked in my head and I realised what it was his character was missing. And at that point, suddenly everything made a whole lot more sense. And I was able to kind of figure him out and. and actually get really really good characterization for him <laughs> in both Hyena Boy and the, the current project. Um yeah he's he's intelligent. He's a lot more intelligent than I may have given him credit for when I first started conceptualizing his his character and, and first you know started the editing process for, for how his character is now. Um, he's also very empathic which kind of you know, ties into how he is and how he behaves. Um, he doesn't, you know, between the empathic nature of his character and his intelligence, he is very calculating. He very rarely does anything just by chance, even if it seems like that's what he's doing. Um, he does take the time to sort of think about the possible consequences, but those possible consequences could also tell him a lot about what the situation is he's in and what's actually going on so he does yeah he's he's very much about calculated risk um and calculated choices and but that's not all that his character is it's just like a small part of his character that will focus on those kinds of things and then you've got all these other bits and pieces to his character where they kind of like yeah there's there's a lot of, of depth to him. He's definitely a very interesting and very fun character to to write about. And yeah, the the more I kind of learn about his character, the more I really like his character. And he's not by any means a perfect character. Um, I think when I was talking to Jade about him once, I kind of described him as being kind of rebellious. Um, but not rebellious in the sense that you would normally associate with a rebellious character. He's not really necessarily rebelling against anything, and or at least not in that kind of very overt kind of way, but at the same time he is. He, there is this, this nature within him where he's very much decided, this is who I am, so that's okay, but I'm not going to compromise that for anybody else. Um, so he, he's very much about, you know, being true to himself, even if, you know, the, the person he is isn't necessarily the person that everybody else wants him to be. And in that sort of sense, that's that's how he, he kind of rebels, if that makes sense. Um, but it's not like, you know, a proper true rebellion. He's not doing it because he wants to, you know, destroy the system or anything like that. Although I think there's a little bit of that in him. Um, but it's more because he sort of feels that he's, he's very passionate about what he believes and he has very sort of strong, it's very strong sort of moral centre and that kind of pushes him forward and, and drives him forward and most of the decisions that he makes is are being made because he wants to do the right thing by those around him. Um, even if he's not 100% sure what the right thing is all the time. Um, whilst also kind of making sure that he's true to his own beliefs. In, in doing so, he will never compromise his own beliefs for the sake of someone else. Um, and that's very much kind of how he is and, and, and who he is. And that, as I said, that's kind of what makes him rebellious. Um, even if it's not necessarily in like the, the truest kind of rebellious sort of way and 
there are lots of other things about his character that I could talk about, but I can't because those would be spoilers. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there and move on to Jay. Um, <clears throat> I definitely learned so much more about Jay's character from doing the the companion piece uh, than I thought was possible. Um, I've always felt like I've known Jay really, really well as a character, and um, he he is, you know, how how I feel about him and, and how I have always kind of seen him. But there are so many little bits I just just missed with with his character when sort of doing it from his point of view. When you kind of get that outsider's perspective of, of who he is and how he is, it's it's really interesting, and you, you do kind of learn lots of little bits and pieces about him, like, you know, how bad he is at hiding <laughs> certain things, <laughs> even though he was fairly confident that he was really good at it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite quite good getting that other sort of perspective on, on his character and on, on the things that are going on with him. And one of the sort of things I note um, that is quite interesting is in... Jay's own narrative, um, he describes Zell as being a character who suits laughter like it was made for them. Um, but when you actually see Jay kind of within the other narrative, he's the one that's kind of laughing all the time. Um, and I think, you know, in some ways that description of being someone who suits laughter probably fits Jay really, really well. And fortunately for him, he's growing up in a situation where the laughter isn't always necessarily coming from a as genuine a place as it should, because there is a lot of stuff, you know, that it, it does make it difficult for him to be himself, um, because he is living in 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 fear of, of the abuse that he is suffering and stuff like that. So, yes, that laughter is definitely who he is, and that that laughter is definitely a true part of him, but it's kind of being very little and in, in, in his own narrative you get that burying you 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 get that sense of him not being as you know happy as as he should be as you know he, he has every right to be but you know because of the situation that, that he's in he he can't um but yeah he his nickname is hyena boy and it's not just because of his laugh it's because of who he is and the fact that his laughter is something that is sort of contagious and sort of a, a bigger part of him than, than he gets to realise and, and and again one of um, to quote from from Hyena Boy um, he, he does sort of say at one point that he wants to be the person that nickname has been made for um, and not just have it being a mask to hide all the things that are going on um, behind the scenes. Um, but I think he doesn't realise that, that he is, that the real him is the embodiment of that nickname, and that nickname hasn't been given to him just because people can't see what's really going on. It's been given to him because they can see who he really is. And yeah, that's... Being able to do this second, this second storyline where you can sort of get that outside perspective and you can sort of see who he really is as a person is, yeah, I, that's one of, one of my favourite parts. <laughs> one of, not, not my favourite part, one of my favourite parts. Definitely. Definitely. Alright, so now we move on to Orion. Um, <clears throat> Orion is a little bag of contradictions. Um, certainly a lot of the stuff I'm learning about him through, through the narrative that I'm doing kind of smoothens out some of those contradictions a little bit and, and kind of gives them a better sort of context because um, one of the things with the writing Hyena Boy is because it's written as a you know a series of notebook entries and it's written looking back on the events rather than at the point of time the events are happening so the perspective is kind of skewed through uh, memory um, and you don't get a lot of you know interactions with Orion um, through Jay's narrative anyway, so a lot of the stuff like, you know, him having a really hot temper and yet also being the most mature of the group makes a lot of sense to Jay because Jay knows him, um, but you, you, you kind of get to see it a little bit more um, 
with his own narrative, along with, you know, a lot of things that he's dealt with and, and gone through. And yeah, the, the other narrative definitely kind of shows why Orion is kind of a part of the group. Um, I mean, you, you do get a little bit of that within Hyena Boy anyway. You do get the sense that there is a genuine friendship between these friends. Yes, they're all different and they're all individual and they're all unique in their own little special snowflakes kind of ways. Um, but, you know, the, the thing that's sort of described as what keeps them together is, is their sense of humour. A lot of the scenes you get with Orion in Hyena Boy kind of shows him as being the straight man. Um, there, there is a nice scene, there is a nice scene where you do get a little bit of, of Orion's sort of sense of humour kind of creeping through a little bit. Um, but most of the time he's sort of playing the straight man in, and and um, it's nice having this other this other narrative where you can actually where I've actually been able to show that no he he does have a bare sense of humour he does you know join in with all the joking and the teasing and all that kind of stuff and he's not just always a straight man usually in Jay's memory he's a straight man um, and I'm guessing that's sort of you know. I think that's probably because he does see Orion as being more mature than they are. Um, even though he's the youngest of the four boys uh, and has the hottest temper. Um, I think, you know, Jay's just, his way of thinking is Zell's kind of the intelligent clown. Uh, Sly is, you know, the, the sort of big brother that will always be there for you. And Orion is the, the mature one. <laughs> And, you know, in his narrative, that's how they're kind of portrayed. That's that's kind of how they're shown and how, how they're sort of seen. Um, but within this other narrative where you get all of these other details and you can sort of see just how, how much more complex his character is and the fact that, yeah, there there is a great sense of maturity and, and responsibility to his character. And, and that's great. That's fantastic. That works really well for his character. But there is a lot more to him than that. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We shall move on now to Kaylara, our lovely girl of the hour. Um, and again, having this sort of new sort of perspective on her that isn't clouded by Jade's absolute adoration of her character, you get, again, you get a definite stronger sense that she does share the same sense of humour as, as the boys do and she you know just genuinely sort of play into to their kind of joking and their, their kind of way of doing things but she's certainly not a lot more sociable than the four of them are or at least a lo lot more willing to sort of make friends outside of their little group and you also get the sense of certainly within the other narrative how long she feels like an outsider for um it's very kind of deliberate in the way I've written Hyena Boy, that when Jay and Talora get together, it's not a spoiler, you do learn about that at the end of the first chapter. <laughs> it's, it's a while before they do actually get together, but you do sort of learn at the end of the first chapter that they are a couple. Um, but you do get a sense in, in Hyena Boy that when the two of them kind of get together, Taylor is still sort of kind of a stranger to him. And within Jay's narrative, that makes a lot of sense because that's how he feels at that point in time uh, with everything that sort of goes on and everything that sort of happens and, and stuff like that. Um, but in the other narrative, you kind of get built up and you can see their relationship sort of developing. And yes, she's still sort of an outsider to the group at that point, but she's less of an outsider than she thinks she is. And certainly within the other narrative, you, you get a very definite, very strong sense that um, she does sort of struggle with this very strong feeling that she's sort of coming in to a ready-made group and trying to find her place within it. Um, and, you know, that's not an easy thing to do. So she's, you know, taking a huge sort of chance sort of doing that. But at the same time, she's very welcomed within that group. And, you know, um, certain characters definitely try their best to make sure that she knows that, you know, she's still their friend and not just Jay's girlfriend and you know it, it, it helps but um yeah kind of getting that sort of nice outsider's perspective and kind of sort of like seeing her as you know not just being Jay's girlfriend and not just who 
Jay's kind of very rose tinted lens, um, you you do sort of see that she's definitely flawed and definitely imperfect and definitely pushy. <laughs> she's a girl who knows what she wants and she will make decisions like just based on that. And she will speak her mind as well, which you know is sort of a, a, a very different position um, than I necessarily thought she had. I mean, I knew she was somebody who spoke her mind. That's very obvious in the hyena boy that she is someone who speaks her mind. Um, but you don't, you, you kind of get told that more than you actually see it because, again, you're, you're going through Jay's rose tinted glasses, so kind of being able to see her sort of in a more sort of neutral sense um, through the other narrative is, is definitely, yeah, it's definitely kind of given her more characterization and given her more of a fitting feel, and you can kind of see why the group kind of consider her to be their friend too and, and not just Jay's girlfriend and yeah yeah <laughs> um I don't know how much of any of that made sense um hopefully if you sort of compare it to what I said about them previously you'll kind of get a, some idea of how my opinions have sort of changed and, and altered and moved um since since I actually filmed those back in March Oh, such a long time ago now. <laughs> um, I hope this has also given you guys some curiosity or interested in interest in reading Hyena Boy. I definitely recommend reading Hyena Boy. Of course I do. I wrote Hyena Boy. Why would I not recommend it? <laughs> Why would I not recommend it? <laughs> um, anyway, I hope you guys have found this one interesting. I apologize for all the constant hyena boy stuff that's going on at the moment but just put up with it for a little bit longer please <laughs> um next time um i want to revisit talking about petting um partly because obviously it's it was one of the first vlogs that i did and not everybody's necessarily watched my early vlogs because they were on a longer format um, and stuff like that and quieter in not as good recording and yeah whatever else um so yeah the, the plan is to revisit Etin next time so I hope you guys are looking forward to that I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe see ya